This week, we ring in the new year with the best and worst of 2019, and I get to define it. In the leadership and communications section, replace resolutions with habits and make your life mean something beyond 2020. The right way to form new habits, how to handle speaking in public when you're not a public speaker, and more. Business Security Weekly starts now. This is Security Weekly. For security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where we explore the business of security to improve the security of business. Your trusted source for actionable insights on leadership, communication, and innovation. Get ready for Business Security Week. You know what the biggest cyber risk is for your organization? It's the browser, and your users are in it all the time. Every time a link is clicked, untrusted web code enters your network and runs on your machine, exposing you to risk. What if users had full access to the web, but never touched web code? You'd have all the benefit of the web and none of the risk. That's why Authenticate built Silo. It's a browser built in the cloud that runs all web content in a remote, isolated browser that never touches your network or device. With a simple click, your organization is fully protected from all web exploits. Find out more at securityweekly.com forward slash authenticate. That's authentic number eight. Welcome to Business Security Weekly. This is episode number 157, recorded January 6th, 2020. Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a happy and safe holiday season. I am your host, Matt Alderman, here in Colorado. Joining me remotely from G Unit Studio in Rhode Island are my co hosts, Mr. Paul Asadorian and Mr. Jason Albuquerque. Hey, good to be here, Matt. Yeah, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, all. What, no comments about the Patriots? I know. No, 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 because then we got to get into the Buckeyes, and I'm just (laughs) saying we stay away from football. We got got Uh, thick skin. It's all right. We do. We were sad, though. It was was sad. I mean, you know, it happens. It was a crazy weekend for football. I mean, some of those games were just nuts. The, The two overtime games, and yeah, just crazy. It was a good football weekend, though. The games are great. Was. The games are great. I only yeah. watched the one game, sadly, for if you're a Patriots fan. <laughs> but, you know, we have a lot to look back on to make us feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just hope there's some plans for the future. Anyway. It'd be interesting to see how it's all going to play out, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah, that is true. What, what I found interesting that relates to this show, actually, is, and we were talking about it today, how the folks that have worked with and coached with Belichick, how they've gone on to be great leaders, yeah. right? Like to recognize a truly great leader is one that can create other great leaders. Mm-hmm. And the teams, I mean, quite frankly, we had trouble with were ones that came out of the Absolutely. Patriots organization. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's a that's a huge leadership lesson. I think we're going to say similar things about Amazon mm-hmm. uh, today yeah. as well. Yeah. So. yeah, it ties into the theme. I almost mm. went down the football theme path and I said, no, 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 I want to broaden it a little bit. To your point, that was one of the things that kind of stuck out to me when you think about the Patriots, the run that they've had, Vrabel and and the others, you know, that have done very well against the Patriots just shows you how that teaching and that leadership and moving these leaders to other teams have an impact. And so I wanted to pull on that thread a little bit for the topic today, because this is one of the few weeks we don't have an interview uh, on the show. So it gives us a chance to talk about that a bit. Sweet. Did you have announcements too? Yeah. Yeah, I got to do my announcements first. All right. Attend RSA Conference 2020, February 24th to 28th, and join thousands of security professionals, forward-thinking innovators, and solution providers for five days of actionable learning, inspiring conversation, and breakthrough ideas. Register before January 24th and save $900 on a full conference pass. You can also save an extra $150 with our discount code. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash RSAC2020 to register. We will also be recording in Broadcast Alley at RSA Conference 2020, and you can visit that same landing page, forward slash RSAC2020, to book your micro interview or sponsor one of our enterprise shows, which we will be recording from the conference. We're actually going to do four of these shows at conference this year, so you can book an interview segment there. All right, now we can get into our topic. So what I wanted to do is... I kind of sat back and I looked at 2019 and I said, let's let's highlight some of the the best and some of the worst of 2019. And this isn't specific to necessarily just company performance, but there are some interesting storylines that I wanted to kind of highlight as learning lessons from a leadership and communication perspective 
uh, as takeaways from from what happened in 2019. And so we can start with the the best if you guys want to. Sure. Again, yeah. I randomly picked these as as three companies. I could have included Microsoft in this list. Yeah. I wanted to kind of diversify a little bit. I didn't want to go all tech. Yeah, yeah I mean, what uh, you know what's kind of scary for me, right? When we look at Amazon and when we'll get to Facebook later, when you watch a lot of uh, movies and TV shows that basically the villain is big corporations. Yeah. I just am increasingly very scared, right, <laughs> right? Right. Because I see the partnership that was laid out very simply right in the articles you posted, Matt, between Amazon mm -hmm. uh, and Facebook, and you see how much reach Amazon has, right? And right. it makes it kind of scary. It is cool to look at their leadership lessons, but I mean, they're just their own delivery service now was kind of oh, it was kind of scary yeah. for me because I felt like I was in a sci-fi movie or TV show. Right. Where everything takes over, and everywhere you look, there's an Amazon logo on a car driving it's, it's, around. It's what's right? driving like, the debate in Congress right now about the monopoly and breaking up the yeah. monopolies, right, of these social yeah. media and technology companies. Yeah. But you can't. But but the point with Amazon is, the just the discipline and the mm -hmm. the leadership and in the growth. I mean, you know, everybody. This this started as an online bookstore, mm -hmm. right? And now look at them. They're not just a retailer. They're a technology company. Yeah. They're in media delivery services with, with Amazon Prime. They're producing their own shows. I mean, this company has just expanded into all kinds of markets. They are a behemoth. Yeah. What's interesting is one of those shows produced by Amazon is one I watched recently. It was recommended by a guest that came on uh, last Thursday, Kavio Perlman. And she said, you got to watch the feed. And it very much has that theme of like, big corporation oh, yeah. and it's produced by Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> but no, I think I think they've they've built an incredible culture, right? I mean, just the article alone shows you how diligent they've been on creating their values, right? And their principles and and building those those leaders within their organization around those core principles and values. And really being diligent about them, right? Holding people accountable mm -hmm. toward them, making sure that they're grooming leaders, um, you know, putting them through leadership training to know the cultures. I mean, that's what the, you know, a theme across a lot of these um, companies who are successful really did is they, they built this corporate culture. They built this, you know, Amazon culture when we're talking about Amazon. It, it, they have their own brand, right? They have their well, own flavor within the organization. What I find interesting is you know, Amazon making, you know, uh, revenue numbers that are just staggering. Right, and one can think, well, they're all about money. The frugality, yeah, uh, it really does stem from their leader, and really is embedded in their corporate culture. Mm -hmm. And I thought this was one of the most prolific things in here. Uh, and it says, because like this is something I, I would recommend to all organizations and and take it to our own organization, right? Accomplish more with less. And I really think it's a hacker kind of part of yeah. the hacker ethos, right? Constraints breed resourcefulness, self sufficiency and invention. There's no extra points for growing headcount, budget size, or fixed expenses. Right. Yeah. I mean, that that's pretty profound, yeah. if you ask me. Yeah, and well, very much in the hacker spirit that, you know, is in our culture, for, for sure, sure, right? I mean, the other one that, that, that really stood off to me is, is ownership, right? Mm. I mean, right out of the gate, they're saying, you need to be accountable, right? Leaders are owners. They don't want to hear things like, that's not my job. Right. It's your job, right? You're a leader within the organization. You are accountable, and you own aspects of this, of this business. So you have to be accountable for it. And, and not only are they doing it internally, they, they're also creating a set of leaders that are taking these same principles and yeah. putting them into new companies. Mm -hmm. They are creating the next future leaders for these other organizations. And these same values and core principles are now being brought into these new organizations yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at a bench of future CEOs, right? Mm -hmm. When you start looking across these companies like Amazon and Apple, you're starting to see who's going to pop out there and become CEOs of the next biggest company. Yeah. And I want to – Apple's the next one on my list. Oh, wait. And one he, more thing on Amazon. Oh, they still, sure. Do they still build their own desks? <laughs> That's a huge part of Amazon's culture. Right. Did you, do, did you ever see a, a picture of like early Amazon office with Jeff Bezos? They use doors, and they use a door as <laughs> as the desk. And as he started adding employees, they would all go out and get a door and basically build their own desk. And it right, became a right. kit. And I still think every employee is still I, I don't know how true this is today, mm. but they, a lot of them still build their own desks. And there's a kit you can order on Amazon, right? That is like the kit for building your own desk. Yeah. Funny. That's something we would do here. I mean, totally. Actually, if you look <laughs> yeah. around in this set, it literally is stuff that we've yep. built or yep. 
Actually, some of the stuff we pulled out of the dumpster, quite frankly. Yeah, like this fire, I mean. yeah this fireplace right behind me is a perfect example of that. Yep. <laughs> now, the fireplace looks kind of new, Matt, but anyway. It is new, but I had to build it in and build it up mm. and build it by hand. And it's not completely done. It's getting there. And I still have to put the pictures on the walls and get the chairs in. But we're getting there. But yeah, yeah so you, I'm building just, my own set. Nice. <laughs> All right, you guys ready to move to Apple? Yeah, let's move to Apple. Well, I, obviously, we, we know the, the jobs uh, effect right here. But one of the things that I thought was interesting when the articles earlier this year on Apple is that a lot of the, 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 the thought, the innovation, the direction is still influ influenced heavily by Steve Jobs and, yeah. and the work that he did originally at Apple. So I, I've been watching too much sci-fi lately because I read this as Steve Jobs <laughs> still drives Apple's current and future products. Like they've somehow <laughs> created a full-scale AI representation of Jobs inside the computers at Apple and like he's still he, he's alive. He's there somewhere. He's there somewhere as an AI program that like only some people can access. Oh, that's awesome. Right? There's like biometrics to get in and they can go have a meeting with the AI representation of Steve Jobs. That's how yeah. I read it. That's funny. <laughs> that would be but super I mean, cool. That would be really cool. <laughs> but if you think about, you, you know, when, when Jobs left, there was a lot of questions about the future of Apple and where it was going to go and how was it going to get there? How were they going to get through some of these base challenges? His legacy still driving aspects of that. Cook has made a lot of really good decisions and choices to continue to propel the growth of Apple. And I think it's hard sometimes when you step into a leadership role from somebody as iconic as Steve Jobs and be able to uh, address these challenges head on and continue to take that vision, that legacy, and continue to grow it. Uh, we saw the failings of Microsoft do this before uh, Satya Nadella came over and really mm. took the reins, right? Ballmer didn't have that same impact that yeah. Gates did. Mm. But Cook has had, uh, I think, a really good run here with, with Apple and, and continuing that legacy. But correct me if I'm wrong. I think Cook was groomed over a long, long period of time th with Steve Jobs, right? Like I'm a decade. Sure. It's a good question. You know, I, I think I think he really was, you know, tied to Steve Jobs' hip as the as the CEO, COO for quite a long time. But But I think Jobs left behind... A legacy and culture that was more prominent than what Gates had left behind, sure. as far as legacy and culture. If it was you bigger think than the about, it was bigger yeah, than the if you think about some of the the vision and cultural mm -hmm. aspects that you've learned as an outsider looking in, right. we can all identify those things with with job. We've all seen the you know documentaries and read the books and whatnot, right? I don't think Gates left behind that much of a legacy in terms of the culture right. behind. Microsoft Gates leaves behind a huge legacy huge in his culture. charitable work. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's just yep. amazing, right? And some of his leadership lessons are really good. Um, but I think Jobs has more of that culture that has bred really, truly innovative technology yeah. that has been brought to the masses, right? And a mm -hmm. lot of that is Jobs is like, look, it's got to look awesome. It's got to be usable. And we have to be innovative. And it's not always about what the customer wants. Right. I mean, we all know this. And you can imagine how ingrained that is in Apple's culture. I mean, today. It's, there were there were two different personalities, right? Yeah, I mean, if you look at totally. Steve Jobs, he had the he had the charisma, and in, in, mm -hmm. he was articulate, right? He was an orator. He he, he spoke very well. Um, you know, Bill Gates didn't have quite that ability to build a culture that way. Yeah. Right. So I I think his skills you know, were different. Uh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You guys want to go to Lululemon? I threw this one in here because you know this is one of those interesting companies that has just been on this tear lately, yeah. right? If you look at their stock performance, it's been amazing. But they've had some leadership changes, and they've had some challenges they've had to address from the original founder and chairman to the new leadership. But, you know, as a new leader comes in earlier in 2019, has to face these challenges head on and still produce the numbers they produced. It's a really interesting case study here. It, it, you know, this is yoga wear for, for yeah, most I people, mean, right? It's where I get all my tank tops and yoga pants. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> so this is the first time I've heard of them <laughs> reading this article, just saying. But, uh, but for I've me, heard I've... of them before because my wife specifically asked me oh, really? uh, uh, for a presence, and she was like, 
You got to get it from Lululemon. I want Lululemon. Right. I'm like, what is that? Is it a fruit? I'm like, what are you well, talking well, about? Valentine's Day is no, coming up. Yeah, now I know. I had right? no idea what it was. I've just, I've, <laughs> I just learned something. So Valentine's Day is coming up. So Lululemon, huh? There you but go. for me, it was great because you, you, you actually shared articles over time, right? There was an article from like 2018 saying, oh, you got to be careful in 2019. Are they going to have the same growth that they had in 2018 because they killed it in 2018? And then to kind of just see that, that dynamic over time with, you know, influx of a CEO because of certain things that the CEO did and bringing in this new this new CEO. It's amazing the growth that they've had. Absolutely amazing. Especially with him coming in, you know, the new CEO, McDonald's, coming in with, um, you know, a culture change that he had to make, truly. Exactly. And, and that's why I brought some this story to light is because normally we wouldn't cover somebody like a Lululemon on any of our shows because they're, they're apparel, for crying out loud, right? right? But to take some of the leadership and communication and, and cultural trust aspects, mm -hmm. the, the ability to continue to engage the community from, from their perspective, these are great lessons to be learned for leaders as these transitions happen yeah. and how to take and face challenges and continue to grow. I think it's, it, this one's a great lesson on creating a brand, whether it's a brand for a company or a brand for your department or business unit. It, it, you know, it, they really hit it on the head. Create a vibrant community. Create a community of people that creates the demand for the product. So by creating that community, you know, you, you have more and, pe more and more people wanting to be part of that culture. You're going to have more and more growth because people wanting to join that community and, and be I, part I mean, of it. I, I think this is also pretty specific to apparel, right? But I think the number, and I, I can't load the article, but it was like 18% was direct retail sales. And their overall revenue was, I don't know, 3 billions or something like that mm -hmm. in any case they generate a lot of revenue and i think for the apparel industry a lot of it goes direct to consumer which right. in apparel is not a thing but now take that to the security lesson from that right if you can get really good at your business to business or direct to consumer yep. this is a model for that right Absolutely. you don't always have to and we you know talk to companies all the time they want a nemesis p strategy mm -hmm. right they want a reseller a channel partner yeah. strategy you don't necessarily have to rely and we've seen i think more so in the b2b yep. companies stand on their own and go direct to their customers and if you can do that well it can be really successful yeah, yeah. and they've been successful so i thought it was a great mm -hmm. Um, use case here. But uh, some of that, I think, is in that word community, right? Yeah. Yes. You have to build That's a, the key. a you community. You have to build a community. And I think that sometimes gets lost in culture and community and all that stuff. But if you do it right, it can be a, a great source. A, a lot of, of times it's about intent, right? What's, yeah. what's the yes. intent of your business? What's right. the intent of your, uh, your core values as an organization, right? Is the intent to build a community and you drive toward that? Right. Or is the intent revenue? And yes, the community, intent, community comes community later. community is just your marketing ploy to right. be able to sell exactly. more product. That's when it exactly. usually falls on its face. Right. Yes, and we'll talk about that in the next segment <laughs> on the worst. But I, I want to start off with Boeing, right? We've covered this from a leadership failure mm -hmm. perspective on this show last year. And it culminates at the end of last year with the CEO losing his job. This 737 MAX issue and the way it was handled um, has just completely destroyed the trust in one of the one of the leading brands in in industry and in manufacturing transportation there's a lot of lessons to be learned yeah. on what happened with Boeing last year and and i mean it shows the importance of trust right because when you read the articles it shows the first folks who lost trust were the pilots right you you start you know they 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 found that there were issues even before the crash that they were having with this. And, and now the pilots are, are distrustful of, of Boeing. And, you know, that's going to spread to the consumer, right? That's going to end up ballooning out. And, and you know, trust is, a, is especially in a business like this, right? Um, yeah. Trust is a huge piece. Yeah, and there was, and, and there was some controversy at Black Hat with um, a researcher, Ruben yes. Santa Marta, yes. right? He, he'd... Got with a Honeywell. hold of the with Honeywell, I think. No, right? this was with the Boeing. Oh, was it with Boeing. Yeah, his talk in 2019 was uh, reversing the Boeing 787's core network, and there was some controversy over that. And I believe he was almost unable to give the presentation. I was reading about that briefly uh, yep. uh, last week. Um, that he it was in an article about the greatest hacks of 2019 mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. uh, and there, there was some controversy over that. And it sounded like Boeing didn't handle that very well either. Just to yeah. kind of chalk it up to to what we're talking about here. Which, I mean, when you look at this article, they kind of just had all of these just trips, right? Mm -hmm. Nonstop, you know, where they were just losing trust, making false promises, setting deadlines they couldn't meet, even with the FAA. I mean, in that, that just snowballs the trust issue that they were having. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it, it, they they ruin their trust relationship with with the regulators. They now have to rebuild. But now you're starting to see issues beyond the 737 Max. The 777 has some uh, potential safety concerns now identified. So th- this might have a way broader reach than what initiated this whole thing for Boeing, which was 737 Max and how they handled it. Yep. Let's hope they've learned their lessons to address this going forward. Yeah, and, and one of the key points I pulled out of one of the one of the three articles that we had here was, and, and this goes back to core values, right? Right. Criticism has been aimed at Boeing's emphasis on shareholder returns instead of the engineering excellence mm-hmm. culture, right? Yep. We're going to see that with the next story, too. <laughs> I brought Facebook in here because, look, we covered a lot of stuff on Facebook last year. The, their security issues, their privacy issues, just their pretty much lack of regard for, for user privacy as, as a whole. Now, a lot of people could argue that Facebook from a performance, a stock performance, did really, really well. But when you have as many security privacy issues and statements that came out last year, yeah. I don't know how you hold the trust of your community and your brand long term. Oh, I 100% agree. You know, uh, the question coming out of this, these articles that I wanted to post to everybody is where's the tipping point? Where's the tipping point with these social media giants, right? With the consumer not, you know, this, this, this wave of mistrust that's happening with them. Where, what becomes that tipping point where they actually start to feel it, right? And I think it's coming, honestly, I really do. Because the $5 billion fine was a drop in the bucket yep. for them. We covered that, right? It's not the fines. What really will create the tipping point is not the money. It is when they start to lose the network and they right. lose the network effect and the ability to sell this data. Mm-hmm. CCPA, for example, could have tremendous yeah. impact to Facebook in California. But if that continues to replicate throughout the U.S., and you know, then what happens to the Facebook brand? Well, apparently there was a, a leak recently, 4,000 pages of Facebook's mm-hmm. internal documents, and – it was aptly named the switcheroo plan. Yeah. So basically, it was a plan to tell everyone, hey, your privacy is, your data is safe with us. But in the background, they were uh, making deals to sell people's data and strengthening their partnership with Amazon and pushing others mm-hmm. out. That's yeah. what that made me nervous. Yeah. They're actually figuring out more efficient ways to share the data. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And even, even, even Zuckerberg and some of the statements that they made was... It, it, there, you have no um, sense of privacy w- when you're in Facebook. Yeah. I mean, just some of the statements that came out last year should just scare people to the core. Mm. Yeah, you know, the crazy part is that this had a kind of a timeline over the years of, of Facebook all the way back to um, when it was the Facebook at Harvard. And, and just seeing his attitude towards um, the platform back then, mm-hmm. where he was just like, hey, they trust me, stupid people. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's pretty wild that he had that attitude back then. He had that right? vision. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, one of the stories we covered on Application Security Weekly this morning, Mike and I, was CISOs that departed, and Alex Stamos, who was yep. the chief security officer at Facebook, leaving primarily for a lot of these reasons. Mm-hmm. Like, there was no commitment to security and privacy, and he ended up leaving just because he knew what was coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he saw this coming, you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I saw the writing on the wall. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And then, I mean, they have their fingers everywhere, right? I mean, Instagram, WhatsApp. Oh, I mean, gosh, they just yep. they have their tentacles all, all over the place. Yeah, it's crazy. They created React though, which is which is pretty cool. <laughs> they open sourced it too. Well, OS, oh, I think they did OS, OS query. OS too, query too, yeah. Yeah, they've done some great open source. Their technology, Don't get me wrong. yeah, and and the fact that they've shared it is pretty amazing. But you know, obviously, it, when you read the article from Newsweek about that kind of recaps the Facebook privacy violations, mm. you just want to instantly oh remove yourself it's, and all your friends unreal. and family from it's Facebook. It's unreal. <laughs> yes, it is bad. That's why I wanted to highlight this, right? So the next article, uh, the next company I wanted to highlight is Pacific Gas and Light. Mm-hmm. In in all the uh, issues with PG, uh, it's PG and E, Pacific Gas and Electric. I think I, I said light because I'm used to the old light term in, in the old <laughs> name. But I mean, look at loss of trust for a second, right? Here's a utility. Mm-hmm. Its job is to provide electricity to its to to homes and businesses and in here you have late last year this whole issue with the wildfires rolling blackouts rate increases kicking in in 2020 i mean you want to talk about just losing the trust of the consumer oh my gosh this this is a crazy set of circumstances that have happened in california 
Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, it happens a lot in utilities and government and things of that nature that um, don't really maintain their infrastructure, right? They kind of they kind of keep maintaining, or I, I call it deferred maintenance, right? Yes. You, you put it up there, it works, it does its job, we're not going to invest in the infrastructure until we have to, right? So that deferred maintenance comes back and bites you in the ass. Now they have all this these legacy, you know, uh, utility infrastructure out there that... Well, and there's issues with California utilities, power, and water. I think there was a Vice documentary that showed, like, abandoned towns or something like that. Like, there's some issues that don't get a lot of press. Right, right. It, um, but that's what I'm trying I, to say. Think, it happens yeah. a lot in these in these type of verticals, right? Well, and I think especially a large state like California yeah. has a lot of infrastructure. Tons. You know, I mean, they've got major cities as well as, yep. you know, people basically living in the mountains, right, right and everything right. in between uh, beaches and whatnot. So then, it's a then, lot of infrastructure right. to maintain. And like Jason Tons. said, when you start deferring the maintenance, yeah, deferring that maintenance, that can be an issue. Exactly. You have yeah, wires in, that cause, you know, fires. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, a bunch of fires and earthquakes to yeah, deal with exactly. on top of it, right? Well, and then you're dealing with lawsuits mm-hmm. for for negligence and these potential fires. They go into bankruptcy protection. Then they get a rate hike that kicked in on January 1st, yeah. and you're like, this, this story can't get any worse, but yet it does. It's just, And it's gotten a lot of public press just because California being such a huge state, mm-hmm. I mean, this has been all over the news, which really puts you know, PG&E in a really yeah. bad light. Yeah, the impact is just massive. So I, that was my round out of the, the top three and the worst three for, mm-hmm. for 2019. Uh, you, you guys, any, any final thoughts? Anybody else I should have added? Well, I mean, you made a good point. I mean, Microsoft did a great job over 2019, right? I mean, um, you know, Satya Nadella has been definitely stepping it up over the years, and I think this was a good year for them. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, that it was between them and Lululemon, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I got to throw in a non-tech. I got to bring yep. some of the other great success stories that are out there. Sweet. I don't have anything else on that. All subject. right, great. Well, we'll take a quick break and then cover the leadership and communications articles for this week. 